What's up, everybody? Today's May 11th, 2020. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the numerology of two celebrity deaths from over the past weekend. The first being Little Richard, and the second being Roy Horn, one of the guys from Siegfried and Roy. Now, in this video, I'm not going to actually be focusing too much on the numerology. In fact, I don't even have a post devoted to the numerology of Little Richard. This video is going to expand more on the organic side of the matrix. Now, late last week, I made a video called Matrix Queries and COVID Theories. And while I have done videos talking about the organic matrix and how numerology seems to manifest naturally, um, I didn't typically make videos pertaining to a certain circumstance, but Last week, I started to experience so many strange synchronicities and found um, what I thought was really interesting information based on some of my meditation, and it was just something that I wanted to share. And again, these were just theories, these were just ideas, but it was interesting enough that I wanted to make a video on it, which I had never really done before when it came to the organic matrix. So in this video, I want to talk more about the organic matrix as I had more synchronicities leading up to this week. Um, someone mentioned sound in the chat. I think the sound should be fine. But uh, anyway. So first, let's talk about Roy Horn of Siegfried and Roy. Now, news of his death fell on the date May 9th. And I'm actually just going to bring up my Twitter page to show you the bulk of the numerology here. Siegfried and Roy were two characters that were heavily coded by the numbers. When you write out Siegfried Fischbacher and Roy Horn, notice how this has an ordinal value of 277. If you measure from Siegfried's birthday to Roy's birthday, it's exactly 277 weeks apart. Furthermore, Roy Horn was born on the 277th day of the year. Now, 277 is the 59th prime number. Also in ordinal, the name or the word tiger equals 59. And the tiger attack that ended the Siegfried and Roy show occurred on Roy's 59th birthday. He was the one who was bit. And then after all of that, news of his death making the rounds on 5-9, or May 9th. Also, the word entertainment equals 59. So on his 59th birthday, using a tiger for entertainment, he gets bit. Pretty interesting stuff. The name Roy Horn equals 113 in ordinal. In fact, his birth name also has this 113 gematria. And that stands out because the word tiger equals 311. Siegfried and Roy's birthdays are separated by a span of 113 days on the calendar. And then when Roy died, it was exactly 3 years and 11 months before the next total solar eclipse over the United States. Remember, coronavirus pandemic equals 113 declared a pandemic on the date 11 slash 3. It's said that Roy died on May 8th, the date written 5 slash 8. Roy equals 58. His birth name also equals 85, like the 8th of the 5th month. This is also 58 days after coronavirus became a pandemic. In the reverse alphabetic order, Roy Horn equals 76. This is the name as, uh, the same as Tiger, which equals 76. He was born on a date with 76 numerology, and he died a span of seven months, six days, into his 76th year since he was born. Human sacrifice, blood sacrifice, both 76 as well. Roy Horn, whose name equals 50 was bitten by a tiger called Manticore, which equals 50. Notice how Tiger Bite equals 50. The Tiger Bite occurred at the Mirage, which equals 50. 
The Mirage is a Polynesian casino. That also equals 50. And if you measure from the anniversary of Manticore's death to the date that Roy died, it was exactly 50 days later. And no doubt there's a circle riddle in here as well. Also the 666 code if you want to check out the post linked below. Um, very prominent here. In fact, this man's death was definitely related to L Little Richard. And news of their passing came out on the same day. But what I really want to focus on in this video is the organic side of this. So I'm going to touch on this, and then the other thing in the thumbnail for the video says, my NWO pre premonition comes true. And before I get into that, um, or before I play that song, some of you may know that if you followed this channel for a while, that I used to be an electronic musician. So uh, I've played some of my songs before. I used to use my music as the opening theme to my podcast. Well, I actually made a song back in 2006, and uh, I'll play this for you in a little bit. And 2006 is right around the time when I started waking up. So a friend of mine had shown me some information on 9-11, and everything kind of clicked for me, because I always knew there was something more going on. So I made electronic music, and my music didn't really have words. It was all made on the computer. However, there was one song I created where I used my voice. I wrote some words and, you know, spoke during the track. And I actually led some of my sets off back in 2007 with this track. And what it is is essentially about a dystopian future in which the government is forcing people to stay in their homes and take control. And it turns out the words that I used for this song seem to be highly, um, I guess you could say prophetic, in relation to what we're currently experiencing with the coronavirus pandemic. So towards the end of the video, I'm going to play this song and talk about the words I, I wrote for it and how alarming it is. Um, because, you know, I actually lost the, the files for this song, so I wasn't able to re-render it for the past few years. Um, however, I found it on CD. My friends had it and burned it for me. So again, we'll look at that in a little bit. But first, the friend who helped burn the disc for me, this is my good friend Jason, and... Uh, he actually texted me the morning that Little Richard died with a little synchronicity of, of his own. Now, this is a friend of mine who, when I first introduced him to Gematria, he was highly skeptical and didn't really buy into much of this. And who can blame him? You know, I myself didn't really buy into Gematria right away. In fact, the reason I built the calculator is because I wanted to kind of prove it to myself. So Jason sends me a text on Saturday morning, a little after noon, telling me he's hanging out with his girlfriend and they hear this song come on during a movie, and he says, you know, the singer sounds like Little Richard. And his girlfriend, you know, he's a little younger, didn't know who Little Richard was. So he explained who, who he was, played some of his music for her. And then later he finds out that the music actually was made by Little Richard. And as he says here, that was the only time he's mentioned Little Richard in like a decade. And then he wakes up the next day and learns that Little Richard died. <laughs> and, um, you know... He has sent me synchronicities before, but it's pretty rare. So this, you know, pretty much stood out to me. And of course, he texted me this like right after I started looking at the numerology. But what really blew me away is this. So this is my buddy Jason's full name. And, you know, the first thing that's funny about the name is his 202 and 67 gematria. He was the friend that I went to go see the total solar eclipse with back in 2017 in southern Illinois. But in reduction, his name is 67. And late last year, he started dating a girl whose name also equals 67. And this girl's really cool. She's uh, into light language, if you want to look that up. There's something called light language. And um, I don't really know too much about it, but it's pretty cool. And uh, I would advise anybody who's interested to check it out. So anyways, both of their names sum to 67, and they together had this synchronicity, and then the next day, Little Richard dies. And notice how Little Richard also equals 67. Now, this post talks about how my friend Jason is extremely coded with the numbers of the metonic cycle. His last name equals 127. His first and last name equals 127 and 197, like metonic cycle. The Metonic Cycle is 19 years long. He has 19 and 109 numerology. 
His last name equals 68, just like the astronomer who's credited with the metonic cycle, Meton 68. Meton also 67, like his full name in reduction. And the reason I point this out is because Little Richard also had remarkable alignments with numerology related to the metonic cycle. His full name equals 109. His last name has the same exact gematria as 19. Also, the name Pennyman, his real last name, sums to 225, which is the same as Meton. So there was significant numerology connecting him to the metonic cycle, and in my mind, my friend Jason himself is technically this metonic cycle riddle. In fact, I would say two of my best friends both have significant numerology with the metonic cycle. Um, his full name even equals 1312. And think about the metonic cycle being periods of 13 lunar phases per year mixed in with 12 lunar phases per year. Also, the name Jason summing to Tiger and his last name as well. So all, all of this stuff was just too weird. And considering this happened just two days after I made a video claiming that the organic matrix is like exploding, um, I just felt compelled to, you know, really point out how strong the organic matrix is. I mean, it's not just that I can go and decode Little Richard's death and point out the numerology, but then significant things in my life can happen in relation to that as well. And that's what I want people to understand about this code. Um, because I still think, honestly, there's, you know, some confusion about what we're all experiencing here on Earth. And, you know, sometimes I'm critical of people who make videos uh, saying that people in their 80s and 90s are getting murdered. And of course, I guess that could be true. But to me, you know, claiming that we know they're getting murdered is a little bit of a misunderstanding. And that's just my opinion, of course. It's, it's truly what I believe. And, you know, I, I consider that we can all, you know, have slight disagreements but still try to teach the same thing. So, you know, to me, this is a, a very important part of this. And, you know, I wouldn't have made the videos recently that I have if I didn't think that. All right, so the next part of this video is going to be my favorite part of the video. I'm going to play this song, and again, I want you to pay special attention to the words that I used. And in 2006, I was just kind of waking up once again to this whole dystopian future and the idea that the government was not here to protect us and that in the future, f things would get pretty shitty. So what I did in this song is I kind of created this static sound as if your TV was being taken over. And then the voice that comes on is, you know, some voice of the federal government. And it's, you know, it's instructing its citizens what to do. So I'm just going to play this out. Um, I'm just going to leave the screen like this, I guess. I don't really know what else to put on here. And, uh, and then I'll play this, the, the words of the song back and analyze them after I'm done. So uh, here we go. This is not a test. The danger is real. All citizens are urged to take immediate cover. Exit from your homes may result in the loss of life. Remain inside and await further instructions. This is not 
Alright, so I hope you kind of enjoyed that. Now again, that was a song I created in 2006 after I understood what the federal government was and what likely was stored in our future. So let's go back to the beginning of this song and uh, talk a little bit about the words that I used. And I'll, I'll pause it after each line. This is not a test. Okay, so the first line says, this is not a test. And of course, you know, think about how this relates to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, there were many drills ran ahead of time, just like there were for 9-11. And of course, 9-11 even drills the morning of the event. The danger is real. The danger is real. That's right. This is not a lie. We wouldn't lie to you. We're the federal government. The danger that's outside your doors is absolutely real. All citizens are urged to take immediate cover. All citizens are urged to take immediate cover. <laughs> Look what's going on now. We're all co coped up in our houses. Uh, you know, these safer at home acts. We're, we're told that we should stay home, stay inside, don't go outdoors. It's dangerous. Exit from your homes may result in loss of life. That's exactly what we're being told now with this virus, this invisible disease that we can't see. Simply exiting your home, simply breathing the same air as somebody, simply standing within six feet of another human being could result in your death. Remain inside and await further instructions. Remain inside and await further instructions. Shelter in place. Once again, don't go out. You are safe at home. I repeat, this is not a test. All right. So I didn't know exactly how this agenda would be brought about, but I knew that this would be happening. You know, even 14 years ago, I made a song basically saying exactly what the government is currently saying now. How strange is this? The growing crisis has forced desperate response. The growing crisis has forced desperate response. Lockdowns, closing everything that's not essential, completely desperate, the, as desperate as it gets, unprecedented measures. Possessions may soon be ravaged and seized. So that line said, your possessions may soon be ravaged and seized. Now, fortunately, that's not something we're really hearing about too much, but consider that in some countries, they're signing laws that give the government authority to enter your home and take you away if they think you might have COVID. Resistance will not be tolerated. 
Resistance will not be tolerated. That's right. The police will actually approach people who are standing within six feet and arrest or ticket you. Your life now depends on us. And that might be the freakiest line of all. Your life now depends on us. And think about it. Here comes Bill Gates and the World Health Organization. Your life depends on us. You're going to need vaccines if you want to operate in this society. You're going to need our help. Your whole life even depends on us. And if you don't depend on us, you're going to die. So I just wanted to point this out because, you know, I've always remembered that I made this song. I called this song Draconia in anticipation of all the draconian laws that I knew were coming to the world and, you know, the United States in particular. So I just had this vision of a future where we were all locked down and we were told not to leave our homes. And again, I didn't know exactly how it would manifest or what they would use, but now we know it's the COVID-19 pandemic. So the idea that I was always destined to do this type of gematria work, numerology, and help wake people up to the cabal that's running this world, um, you know, I think this is some of the best evidence of that, right? So I just wanted to share that with you guys. I thought it was pretty interesting and um, kind of a cool song, too. I actually like that one. All right, guys, that'll do it for this video. Thanks to everybody who jumped in again. Once more, peace, love, God bless, and we'll talk to you next time. See ya!